In this video, we're going to see how to create our initial base views inside the documentation environment for Inventor. Here I'm going to begin with the creating base views DWG from our working files directory. And we're going to go up here to our place views tab, looking at the create panel. The first command there is called the base command. So we can activate the command there. We can also right click and start the base view command from our marking menu, which I'm going to go ahead and do that right now. When you start that command, it brings up a drawing view dialog box. This allows us to specify which component, which modeling file we'd like to bring in for our documentation view. Now, if you already had a document open, it would be listed here. Since I don't have any other files open, I have to go browse to find one. I'll do that by selecting the open existing file button right here. And from our working files directory, I'm gonna find lock support.ipt. Should look like this guy right here. I'm gonna choose open. And it tells me a representation I can bring in. This is a part view representation. I don't have anything else other than master, so that's fine. Down below, I can choose the view scale. So right now, this is currently about how big it is. And that looks you know, roughly a good size for a B-size sheet, perhaps. So I'm going to leave that at 1 to 1. I can also change the identifier on here. These can also be modified at a later time, in case you don't know what they are right now. Towards the right, we have these style options. So right now, this is a hidden line style. I can also go no hidden lines, as well as a shaded view, and I can do shaded with hidden lines or without hidden lines. So I'm going to toggle off everything except for a hidden line calculation. As I look at my screen down here, you can see the view is attached to my cursor. As I move it around, it's trying to place it. However, I'm looking for a good front view, and based on known drafting concepts and principles, what I'm looking at right here is probably not a good front view of this part. Even though the orientation says front, that doesn't mean it's always the front that you want. So I'm gonna start clicking different orientations. You know, there's a top, there's a bottom, there's a left, there's a right, there's my back, the ISOs, and really none of the ISOs here work at all for a good front view. Now, out of what I saw in here, I think the top view or maybe the bottom view was perhaps the best. So I can actually see that little protrusion coming out of that little extrusion coming out of the cylinder there. That's a good front view. I'm going to go ahead and choose that. And you can select it and choose it by one of two different ways. You can click on the screen and that will place the view. Or if you say OK, wherever the view is currently floating is where it's going to place it. But don't worry too much about that. We can move that view around when we're done. Before I do any of that selection of the view placement here, you can actually see that there's another button checked on this dialog called Create Projected Views Immediately. So I could do that, but instead I'm not going to. And I'll show you how to avoid creating the projected views. Also up here is a couple other tabs. One of them is called Model State. This is some more advanced options if I was doing work with weldments or eye parts or eye assemblies, some more advanced topics with Inventor. On Display Options, we can tell what type of options we'd like to display for this type of file we're bringing in. Now this is different for every type of file you choose. If I were to choose a sheet metal file, it would give me the option for bend extents. If I was choosing a presentation file, I'd have the option to show the trails. Again, this will be different for every time you come in here for every different type of file that you have. So I'm going to focus just here on the component tab. And again, I like where I want this. I'm going to go ahead and just select with my left cursor here. That places the view for me. I want to draw your attention to those green brackets. Basically, when I move my cursor away, you'll see a green bracket under there. Those are called raster graphics. What will happen is if you create a bunch of views at once, a very large assembly, what's going to happen is it's going to process the calculation of the views of the lines of data on different cores of your processor. So essentially making Inventor a multi-threaded application. This is one of the things that Inventor excels at with the multi-threading aspects of a computer. You won't be able to save the file or close the file until those green brackets go away. So if you're loading up a 9,000 piece assembly, you might have to wait for those raster views to finish, but at least let you see what your view is going to look like, and you can actually start documentation such as dimensions while that view is still processing. Right now it's trying to have me place projected views. I'm not going to do that. So instead I'm just going to right click and say OK, and that will produce just that front view for me. So that's my initial base view. Now you can have as many base views in a drawing as you want. You're not limited to just one. Obviously, it makes sense to put it in one base view and then start projecting off of that. But in case you need to bring in another part or another component, 
Maybe we'll bring in the assembly in a very small corner to, you know, just kind of let you know where this part is in the assembly. You could do that. So you're not limited to just one base view. Now, if I'd like to modify this view after it's been placed, and this goes for any type of view we work with inside of here, if I go back to it, you can see I get kind of a light red highlight around the view. If I get close to that edging, I'll get a little move icon where I can move this view around to adjust its location. If I would like to edit the view to go back and change the scale or the shading options, I can simply double click on it. it brings me back into the edit view tool. If I turn this little light bulb on here in the drawing view, that will then turn my scale factor on as well as my view identifier. I'll say OK to that. Just puts that on down below. A little bit of text that I can move around. If I want that to show the part number, if I want that not to show the scale and just the view name, I could do that. You just right click on the view label there. You say edit view label. And then you can control that explicitly. I can blank off this. I mean, I don't want to see the view name at all. I just want to see the overriding scale factor. I can also right click and constrain it to the view border. So that way it moves around with me, and stays connected to it. What I'm going to do here is delete this view. Let's say I didn't want this part to be brought into this documentation. I'll just right click on the view and I can choose delete. It's up near the top of my pop out menu there. Now, conversely, instead of choosing delete there, you could just go to your model browser on the left hand side, find view one there, and choose delete on that side as well. Yes, I would like to delete the view. I'll say OK. Now I'm going to bring in another base view. This time I'm going to choose a file called Shelled Box. Now, as you can see from Shelled Box, it actually is a nice full container that's got a shelled element to it where it's got a hollow interior. I don't want this as a good front view here. I Maybe mean, I want this as a good front view. Actually, the side of it really is the front that I want. However, is the bottom of the shell on the top of this box or the bottom of the box? Visually, I can't tell from this. I can't tell if I'm looking at the upside down or right side up version of this. So instead of trying to just place it and then take a best guess, I'm actually going to come over here and hit this little button called the Change View Orientation. Now, if you can't get a good orientation through any of your standard ones in this list, this little button right here will be your best friend. You shouldn't really worry about a good front view or side view when you're modeling because here you can actually choose whatever type of orientation you want with this button right here. So I'm going to go ahead and select it. What that will do for me is bring me into a modeling view of what this file looks like. So from here, I can then use my cube to make sure that I get the right orientation. So here's that one view I had, but really this is how I want to see the front view. I'll say finish custom view up here. That will then take me back to the modeling environment, from the modeling environment to the drawing environment, and it will keep that as a current view. So when I place it in, it's in the right orientation that I want. Now I can see this from the side there. Of course, I probably have to do some sectioning before I start detailing this, but that's how I wanted to see my front view. Sometimes you can't see those obscured hidden lines. That changes your orientations and give you one of your best friends. Now, if I had chosen this poorly, I can actually double click on it, and I still have that change view orientation button available. So I can go back in and change it again if I don't feel that that was even right. So this is a very, very powerful button, this change view orientation. I'm going to go ahead and delete this one as well. I'm going to do another base view. This time I'm going to bring in our finished loader from our working file set. Click open. Now this time I have positional representations. I have level of detail operations as well. I also have a box up here with a little chain link on it. It says associative. What this allows me to do in a very similar fashion to the IPN environment, it allows me to control how this updates from the original modeling data. So what I like the master view, and master is basically whatever the modeling says, this drawing says, that's your master. Nothing can ever be different from what the model says. However, on the default representation, which default's a bad name for it, it really could be called like a user defined representation view. So there we can have like a interference view, we could have vendor view, we could have isolation view for certain components. So if I were to choose that and then choose associative, as that design view updates from the modeling data inside the assembly, now my drawing data will update as well. If I would like to be, well, you know what, whatever it is right now, let's make that on the drawing. But if it ever changes, I don't want that to affect my drawing. You can really break that associativity by not checking this box. 
So that is something that will stand out for you when you start looking at assemblies or any other selection you make that has different representation views. So I'm going to go ahead and bring this one in. This is perhaps a little big for a B size. So I'm going to make this half scale, just to jump that down. Now, when I'm trying to place it, my dialog box here is kind of in the way. There's actually a neat little trick you can do with Inventor to roll that dialog box up. If you go to your title bar on that dialog box and you right click, you can turn on this auto hide. So as you move your cursor away, that will auto hide up so you have a better view of how you're placing your drawing view in. For now, if I go back up there, you can see it pops out again. Okay, I'm going to try back view. That's how I want my view there. So I'll go ahead and place this in. And I'm going to right click and say OK. And that's just my base view. I want to modify it this time again. Here I'll choose this to be shaded and I'll say OK. And there's our shaded view of it. I can also turn on hidden line calc so it shows me the hidden lines here. And again, that is telling if you're looking at an assembly compared to a part file. I'll go back to just normal hidden line suppressed. This has been a look at just creating the initial base views for parts and even assemblies here. One file type we didn't bring in was an explosion. So let's do that before we finish up this video. So we're going to bring in our loader exploded IPN. Here I'll put that in an ISO view. Make this even smaller and just put that up in the corner here. And I'll make that shaded as well. So there's my exploded view of the design. If I didn't like that orientation, again, I can just double click on it. Click on my Change View Orientation button. Reselect a new orientation. In fact, I could also tilt this up a little bit. It doesn't have to be based on the cube. So maybe I like that to be my orientation there. I'll say OK to that, and it'll update for me. Maybe I want to show the trails on this one, so I'll just double click it. Go to my Display Options here at the end. Now I do have Show Trails turned on, but this particular IPN, I actually turned off the trails inside of the IPN, so they're not going to show up. I have to go back to that file and turn them on. In fact, you'll notice that I don't have the associative option here checked. So I'm going to have to check that or uncheck that based on how I want that to update from the IPN. So again, this has just been a look at creating those initial base views.